Welcome in. Welcome back. I have a uh, extremely special guest. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate you asking. No, I appreciate it, man. Um, Jamil Hill <laughs> has joined the Now What podcast. You're my first uh, star. Oh, stop it. Yeah, man. You're uh, my first star. All right. I'll accept that for now. But you are. Thank you. No, thank, no. thank you for having me on here. Like, if there's every, anybody who is built to have a podcast, it's you. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. You know, if uh, the words mean a lot. So, um, where yo. you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> where yo. would you like to begin? <laughs> so, uh, let's begin uh, with, uh, okay, let's not begin with that. Let's begin with um, a woman in, in journalism. This is what I, I've, I've always wanted to ask you this. A woman in germ, journalism, what was that plight like? Well, for me, um, I was lucky on a couple of accounts. One, uh, I've always wanted to be a sports writer. Like, ne never anything else. I never considered really doing anything other than than this job. Maybe not specifically on TV because I never wanted to be on TV. I just wanted to write. I wanted to... My dream job was to actually write for Sports Illustrated. Really? Yeah. It wasn't... ESPN never was in my... It was never on my vision board. So, um, I was the neighborhood tomboy and I loved playing sports. I loved watching sports but I also loved to read. I was a voracious reader and I also loved writing. And so, um, I got to high school and took a high school journalism class. And uh, being from Detroit, the way it worked is that the professional paper, the Detroit Free Press, they put out all the high school papers. Right. So once a month, you had to actually go to a professional paper to do your high school paper. So once I walked into a newsroom, I was, I was hooked. And so um, everything I've done from then to now was all about just being a sports writer. So I started working for the Free Press when I was in high school, answering phones in the sports department. You know, when... Um, Young phenoms like yourself would, you know, uh, rush for a bunch of yards and score touchdowns. Back in those days, they would the coaches would call a newspaper and say, hey, my team won. This was a score. My star player was Arian Foster. He ran for 200 yards, had three touchdowns. And uh, uh, being I, on the other end, you know, you would just type up what they said, put together little summaries. I didn't know it worked like yeah, that. Yeah, that's how it worked. Because um, back when, you know, <laughs> newspapers uh, before, a lot of them now have gone all digital. But when you read the paper, it was like they had a summary of all everything that happened uh, in high school football. So, um, so yeah, I started like working at a newspaper when I was like 16 years old. And so I went to Michigan State. I majored in journalism, worked for the college paper, had a bunch of internships. So that's all I wanted to do. And luckily for me, um, very early on, I was exposed to women in this business who did it. Mm -hmm. And I did a high school journalism program. Uh, and my first mentor, um, she was a sports writer, uh, and she took me to my first NFL practice. Shout her out. Who is she? Jonette Howard. Who? Um, Jeanette Howard. Jeanette. Jeanette. Yep, Jeanette Howard. Just, no disrespect. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> nah, all good. And she, uh, she was up until, um, uh, unfortunately, the first round of layoffs that ESPN had. She was unfortunately a casualty in that. But okay. she... Um, but yeah, she took me to my first practice. I, I saw the Lions practice. Wayne Fonts was the coach to let oh, you know wow. how long ago. Yeah, it's a minute ago. It's a, it a while ago. It's a minute ago. Um, I'm older than I look. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so being exposed to her and, and other women in this business, because the Free Press at the time they had a few women who were sports writers. Uh, her, Michelle Kaufman. I mean, they they always gave me the confidence that I could do this. And I think for women in this business, and unfortunately in too many areas of in our society. Um, that it, it can be, it can be tough if you don't get that sense that you belong, right? Right? Because I think a lot of women <clears throat> don't feel that way, nope. and they get discouraged early. Yeah. And so a lot of the um, the younger female journalists that come and talk to me, I always when I give them advice, I try to give them a sense that you have to, you know, you have to have a sense of belonging. Like I, I need to be here, and this is why I deserve right. to be here just as much as any man does. So the fact, okay, so. We had to talk about this. So I had the Cam, you remember that Cam Newton thing where yeah. uh, with the woman reporter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had a I had a podcast earlier where I was talking to a uh, a um, a transgender woman, and mm -hmm. I brought this up, mm -hmm. and I was trying to I not defend Cam Newton, but I probably shouldn't feel like that as I should feel like that because I'm a uh, humanist, right? So I feel like everybody should deserve uh, everybody deserves respect. But in that instance, in that particular instance, and for those that don't know, uh, Cam Newton was asked a question by a female reporter, 
and he uh, he said it's funny <clears throat> that. He said, he said, what did he say? He said, it's funny to, uh, it's just kind of funny to hear. Basically, the gist of it was funny to hear a woman oh, like. A female this, talk about routes. Talk about routes. That's right. Exactly. And so, uh, I agree with that. And I'll tell you why I agree with that. It's terrible Uh-oh. that I agree but I agree with that. I'll tell you why. <laughs> <clears throat> because you don't hear women talking about routes that much. So, the problem I had with it was, wasn't, people blew it up. And I think. He got uh, he got dropped by I think Dan and yogurt. Yeah. I don't even eat Dan and yogurt, but uh, it's a shame they got dropped for it because I feel like people blew that sound bite up. Right, right after he said that, he he answered her question thoroughly. Right, like very thoroughly. Right, so he like you could feel how you want to feel about somebody asking you a question. Like the majority of sports reporters that ask us questions, and I say us because I used to play, so they're not very good questions. I totally agree. And so, like, her question, if you listen to her question, it wasn't a good question. <laughs> it was not a good question. And and I, I think it was just because she was a woman. So, like, there's this, like, um, juxtaposition of... No, no go ahead. No, you no, no. I was, jump no, in, what jump I was going to say was, like, <gasps> your <you're>, um, <laughs> nuance in our, in our society is lost, right? Nuance mm-hmm. is lost. There was a lot of parts to it. Now... It is um, the way Cam did it, and uh, this ties into a lot of things with him anyway, right? Because there are times where, yes, we all know that when he's sitting there at the podium or standing there at the podium, he doesn't necessarily present his best. But that he, the dressed, question, he dressed to the nines, though. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Man, to some of it is he, a little like he does it's a little he, out there. He does what he does. He you're, does you're right. I mean, look, my if, opinion on it is irrelevant. But he, that's true. he dressed to the nines. Though. He, he look if he can pull it off. Hey, he feels comfortable wearing <clears throat> the feather and, you know, <laughs> granny's house coat. Whatever. Oh, That's all man. him. That's all him. All right. hey, I'm, look, I'm, I'm sure it costs more than everything that I own. 100%. Right? 100%. But so it, it was it, it was more I guess I was more annoyed by it just because. Um, and this is what I want. I want to yeah. get I want to get a female, not just a female perspective, but a female, female journalist, female journalist mm-hmm. perspective on it, because <clears throat> I didn't like I think. OK, so where do you draw the line of bad reporting and and like disrespect in that aspect because I don't think do you think it was a, like the no, question the question wasn't great was, she I, st- I totally agree she said he's really out there truck sticking guys like, like it's a Madden reference and you talking to one of the best quarterbacks <laughs> in the NFL like it's a bad question I mean I didn't think it was okay going back to what you said a second ago generally speaking we do ask bad questions. Like we, we terrible. Do. A lot of it is born from to give the other side of it is like we're asked <laughs> to produce content when there really is no content. You know what I'm saying? And that's that, but like they're written. I'm we, so we, with we, that. We have to feel like okay, looking at our our network, and this is obviously not to disparage the place that I work, but like we're a 24 hour network. Yeah. At some point, all of it isn't gonna be it's genius. The same. You know what I'm saying? It's, <laughs> it's like it's just okay. not. And so and so in that in that aspect, so when you have a uh, uh, when you have a, a athlete give you an off the wall or uh, an, an oddball answer, you can't you can't feel disrespected by it because you asked, how do you feel about a man running routes? But he see he would have been fine had he said it's just funny to talk to a reporter about a route tree. But he said a female, and that's what set it off. But then, I look. Is it not funny though? Like, okay, if, am I fucking be, up? Being real, if a dude asked him that question, would he have said it's just funny? It depends on the dude. He would have never said that. It depends on the dude. Okay, he so, so, if, never so, said so, so that. like, uh, if if like a dude that looks, I mean, because they're reporters. So like, if a dude that looks like it looks athletic. He, right. he goes and asks him that question. He going to answer the question. He, and he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. But a woman that says, hey, do you like the physicality of his routes? And he's really out there truck sticking guys. Yeah, yeah. You're going to like, come on, like, why are we here? <laughs> Again. Why are we here? The poorly phrased question aside. Okay, cool. like as long as, long as, we, as long as we acknowledge that, I'm not mad at it. Oh, yeah. But then the other side of that, though, and this is why I said this, that exchange had a lot of layers because then it's, the response and I, I do agree with you that I felt like advertisers dropping him and that I felt like the outrage police was handing out too was, many tickets. Yeah, it was ridiculous. They were just handing out too many, right? Man. The other part of it is then then, as what happens in twenty seventeen, is that then the Twitter detectives got on her. Oh. Because yeah. when they unearthed the, the tweets that she had, yeah. you know, dropping some racial slurs. Yeah, she's dropping M bombs all day. So then 
I feel like um, in that situation that if the other athletes, if the other Panthers, if they felt if they didn't feel comfortable talking to her, they were well within their right. Mm -hmm. Given what I mean, she apologized and everything. I don't know why she still kept those tweets up, and I don't even know why she said it. And especially, you know, you know why she said. Well, I know why she said it, but it's like you know what I'm saying. It's just like, yo. So the other side of that is like, yeah. He made he said that, and I I mean he said that because she she was a woman, and that's why I was like, all right, Cam, this ain't the first woman that covered you, man. Like it's just like, it is, all right, it, man. It is. I mean he I mean he was he was a little condescending. He was a little condescending, and you, and if but he the does that to a dude, so garbage. We're probably not having this discussion. That's true. But I don't think again if he's talking to a dude, he'd say it's just funny to be discussing you know a route tree with a man. Like he would never have said that. Or, but but, but <laughs> there's a reason why he wouldn't say that. Because in his mind, it would have been totally normal. No, no, because men don't play. I mean, I mean, uh, women don't play football. All right. Is, <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong? Okay, so I mean, that's, I just, <laughs> that's why it's funny, though. Okay, because so you're talking to a, a a star quarterback in the NFL right? about routes, and women don't play football. That's why he found it funny. I, I agree with a him. A lot of the dudes that cover y'all don't play football. A hundred percent. And that's why they're... Questions are goofy. <laughs> they got a lot of goofy questions too. It's, I mean, look, it's. I it's, guess that so so that that line that y'all have to walk of, did you walk this life to people who are the top one percent of the one percent? So, so I, what I, is, I, I always tell, always tell journalists is like, don't go in there when you ask. It, there's a level of professional respect I feel like you have to give to athletes, coaches, whoever you're covering. Right. Don't come in there like you know more than them because you don't. All right. Right. And so that doesn't mean that you all don't have the right to get criticized. It's just a way in how you phrase things. Right. It's like I don't know more than coaches I cover, no matter how many film sessions I've sat in there with them and all that. Y'all know it better than we do. Right. We may observe and see certain things and want to know why, right. which is what we're supposed to do. Right. right? It's right. like, OK, well, yeah, it's OK if we ask Pete Carroll, dude, you you want yard out, man. Why, why are you throwing the ball? Yeah, it's okay if we ooh, ask that, ooh, right? It's ooh. okay. Because, like, <laughs> that's, that is... If you're, if, you're, if you're seriously inquiring, I right. agree. I mean, you I know agree. what I'm saying? Like, we okay. kind of got to ask you that okay. question, okay. right? Okay. okay. Did he ever answer that question? I mean, look, nobody, you know this, <laughs> nobody, no coach, whenever they call something, they don't intend for it not to work, hmm. right? They all think it's, it's going to be the, the genius play call, but he outsmarted himself. He yeah. overthought it, I think, all right? I think schematically he was doing the right thing, but sometimes you just got to... You just yeah. overthink things. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. dude, you got Marshawn Lynch there. I got you. See, you got you there. Like, hand, hand it off. So, there is a fine line that of, I think, respect that we have to show you all for what <laughs> you do. And I do hear that a lot, you know, watching, you know, press conferences and stuff. It's like, it's a lot of reporters that just be on their own shit and yeah. just trying to show you, like, oh, I know more than you. No, you don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And there is a way that you can still respectfully question somebody. That's and, what I feel like yeah. is, is missing a lot. And. And I think, okay, so journalism in, in general is not, in my opinion, what it used to be. And I don't even mean, like, when I was a kid. Like, I just mean, like, like in, if you look, like, back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. So, like, journalism, like, before you put a story out, you had to triple and quadruple check it. And, like, today's society is all about clickbait. And, how, like, what is, what is that? Because I didn't go to school for journalism. So I don't know anything about journalism, but from what I know, is that is that correct? Um, yes and no. Um, I think technology has has totally it just turned journalism upside down. Right. And especially, you know, Twitter, social media, reporting at first has the priority as opposed to getting it right. Right. And that's insane. And uh, that's so dangerous. It's very dangerous. Um, but, you know, it's it's in, in this age where you're competing for people's attention <clears throat> it's very difficult to kind of for some institutions to stay true to accuracy and, and the principles that were of our business like when I was coming up as a journalist if you got somebody's name wrong like in print that was a cardinal sin that was right. like the worst thing you could ever do like getting somebody's name wrong right. misspelling things like that was so bad and I've been able to kind of get the perspective that you have as somebody who's being covered because I'm written about now a lot. And right. the level of inaccuracy is just stunning it's to insane. me. It's insane. So unfortunately, what happened is that um, a casualty in the business is that a lot of media companies had to shrink. They downsized. Yeah. They leaned out. 
some of the first positions to go were editing positions. Yeah. Right. Wow. And you don't have a lot of great editors in our business who make sure that things are right. Double check things, all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't happen. And clicks became more important because, you know, now they're in the business of making money. You know, like when I first got into journalism, I never got into it to make money. I remember I, I was reading a, a copy of Time magazine every year. They put out a list of the best professions in the top 100 professions. And they tell you how much the starting salary is for all of them. It was only two other professions. I can't remember what they were. I feel like one of them was like law cutting that were that got paid lower than a journalist. Average salary for a journalist was 19 grand when I was in college a year. Mm. And I was like, shit, I'm already hustling backwards. Right, <laughs> I, mean, yeah. like, I even graduated. <laughs> I'm already hustling backwards. Jesus. Right. So when I came out of college and I made that hot 22 grand, I was like, I'm balling out yeah, here. Yeah, we, we, uh, we above standard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, uh, the core of the profession was never about money making. And so you used to have a lot of newspapers in particular that were owned by families. Yeah, right. Okay. Now they're all owned by corporations. They've consolidated. You have four or five people who own all of media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when that happens, that's when it becomes more of a money game as opposed to a journalism game. That's, it. that's, so, that's so unfortunate <clears throat> because I think a free press is so important for this country. A free press is, 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 it's mandatory for for a free country, and that's what's going on right now. Is the attack of the free press by our sitting president? Um, and a beautiful segue is <laughs> see this. I, this is why you built for this. Like, oh, I saw it as a professional. I was like, I see where you're going with this. That segue was banging. It was, Go man, ahead. It was banging. I appreciate that. But um, so <laughs> you were a target. By a sitting president. <laughs> it's wild. That is fucking insane. <laughs> the president of the United States yeah, that has happened. something to say about you. Yeah, it's going in the obit for sure. <laughs> it's going to be a line in there. Once was attacked by a sitting president. That's insane. That's insanity. So, like, <laughs> I don't know where to start with this, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask this. How how did that come about? I mean, I know, but just for the listeners that don't know, how did that come about from your perspective? I fired off some tweets Ooh. that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> that's, how, that's how all stories start. That's how out. all started, right? It's I like fired off some. You know, as 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 my the recently departed from ESPN, her man was often said, "Don't press in." He's not. He's not in it. Nah, he, he's the head coach of Arizona State. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's right. Uh, okay. he did, his Friday was his last day. Uh, um, so at any rate, I. I I, I was in a back and forth with uh, a Twitter, you know, I don't even know if this dude was a follower. I was in a back and forth um, because, you know, he was trying to justify his voting decision right. with things that I thought were kind of inaccurate, right. you know, because we were just talking about accuracy and, right. and why that matters. And now, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, another subset of that, um, not to get off the question you asked me, is that. Now people actual when you are ac actual accurate reports are being treated as fake, which is another right. whole nother problem. Right. right. So at any rate, um, we're going back and forth. And it was actually a respectful conversation. It was like no name calling or anything like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, Rare on the Internet. I know. Right. Shout out to you and that guy. <laughs> right. That. We were just going back and, and forth. He, did he have an egg av avatar? He did not. He had an actual picture. Shout out, was it a dog? Uh, it wasn't dog a dog. Okay, it, was, it was a dog. It wasn't a dog. And he wasn't shirtless. Hey, dog, dog, dog pictures are hilarious. On, and and on that's Twitter, like a man. dead giveaway. Like, you know what you're about to get. <laughs> you right? know what it is. So, um, he and I going back and forth, and then I just said, you know, what I thought to be, I thought everybody knew. I, I thought, you know, I was saying water was wet. Like, I didn't think I was saying anything. Which is a debate in itself. <laughs> we'll get into that later. I didn't think I was saying anything that was shocking. It had been said before. And unfortunately, um, those, you know, people, they comb through your replies now. Yeah, right? Oh, 100%. Like, big time. So... People and especially one person in particular who, you know, <laughs> is 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 kind of drumming this anti ESPN, liberal ESPN banging that drum. Right. That was like catnip to, for him. Right. <laughs> catnip. I was like, and I refuse to say his name because he don't deserve he don't deserve the publicity at any rate. One hundred. We ain't going to we gonna bring him up. So um, that was like catnip. And so next thing you know, it has fully blown up. And um, of course, 
you know, certainly it got ESPN's attention. 100%. <laughs> it got their attention. And there was some. Well, it was the president of the United States. Well, it just it just steamrolled because at first it was just it started with the, with the tweets. Then it, the white at the White House. You know, press and so briefing for those, when it was brought up. And for those that don't know, she said that Trump was a white supremacist. And I know you uh, have a... You have Big Brother watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going mean, to say... I said what I said, and I don't take it back. Like, so you, I, I okay, ain't going to so, retract. So you don't... No, no, no retraction. I, okay, I never cool. have, and I never will. So that's interesting. Okay, so... <laughs> as... As you're going through your daily Twitter life, this obviously was the biggest shit that happened to you on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mean. So when Donald Trump <laughs> responded to you, what what what, ha what happened? Well, like, he responded after I was suspended, right? So that's true. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> before the suspension. So you go hit him with the get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before you know that happened is like when the White House in the press briefing when my tweets were brought to the attention of the White House press secretary then that was like sort of the first explosion right? she's so trash I, I'm gonna say it for you she's so trash but go ahead, go ahead so that was the first explosion and then once I was suspended and clearly um, the sitting president took delight in that I right. uh, made that known. Right. Um, and obviously, I'm not the only journalist to have been attacked by him. I mean, he got of a list of people not. that he just like. And they're, most, and they're mostly colored people. So there seems to be a commonality. A, a about trend. All There's of definitely it. a trend. <laughs> there seems to be a commonality about all of it. So, yeah, no, it was it was crazy. And Eminem had a whole verse for him. <laughs> and he didn't say nothing to Eminem. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it, Go ahead. <laughs> my fellow Detroiter. So, um, right, right. so um, yeah, it was it was that was crazy. And of course, you know, as usual, stuff that happens, phone blows up. People are like, wah, wah, wah. you know, Twitter mentions lit on fire and all that. This is this is probably going to sound crazy slash ridiculous to most people. But like, I didn't really care. You know what I'm no, saying? No, it's course. like it was no. it wasn't one of those things. That bothered me at all. The only thing in this situation that was tough for me to get through was, you know, I've been at ESPN for 11 years. Right. All right. And during that process, obviously, I have a, very, a lot of close relationships in there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people who supported me, who believed in me. And this is the tricky thing about, you know, being a journalist. Like, it worked this way at other companies <laughs> I've been at. It's like, regardless of what you may feel, all right, and even if you feel what, you, what you're feeling is right, it's a time and a place. Right. And um, that, you know, I put some people in some awkward positions, namely, for example, my co-host, you know, who's a Michael right. Smith, who's a dear friend, your twin brother. Oh, right, here you go. <laughs> you know, all light-skinned niggas look alike. <laughs> they man. always tell us people. People are always like, we all, look, we all look alike. You, Drake, and Michael Smith. There like, y'all triplets. And J. Cole, <laughs> and like, any other Not so much, though. See, it's the, it's the combination it of light-skinned and I get it all. I get, I, get, I get Kyrie, which I understand. Kyrie? Kyrie I, I, everybody said I look like Kyrie, hmm. J. Cole, Drake, and Michael Smith. <laughs> and it's just light-skinned niggas with beards. That's all it is. <laughs> so, I... um. You know, and, and not that not that he and, and I have never expressed anything but 100 uh, 100 percent support for one another. Right. But, you know, this happens and it simultaneously blows up his world, too. Yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And so that I really felt regretful about. And he took a stand for you, he too, did. which was and so I, admirable. I, um. I, and that is why, like, um, among a, other list of reasons, I mean, my my love for him was unconditional before right. that. Um, but as you know, when you go through tough things, that's when you really find out who's down. hundred percent. That's when you really find out. So, um, so yeah. And then, uh, you know, with us trying to like get this show going the way we wanted to, it was just like a lot of things that just were just combusting all at once. So mostly it was just about, um, for me, it was just dealing with, uh, <laughs> sorting through everything at work. It really wasn't, I, I didn't care what the president said. Like that was no big deal. That's easy to say. <laughs> it's, it's easy to like the fact like the president of the United States of America there's only 40, 45 of these motherfuckers and one of them has something to say about you that's insane the irony is just the uh, the president and preceding him uh, former president Obama like is, we are running up on a couple we're a couple days away from the year anniversary of me drinking Hennessy in the White House whoa True story. Whoa. Like last year, this time, I was drinking Hennessy in the White House. I had Henny Bottle in the White House. 
Come on, man. You know who our last president was. Henny, though. <laughs> you know who our last president was. Woo. You know how you know Barry get down? That's heavy. <laughs> I forgot they called him Barry, though. <laughs> yeah, I forgot exactly. they called him Barry. So, yeah, because uh, I was fortunate enough to be invited back-to-back years. Right. And so uh, he was, uh, the former president, was a big fan of ESPN. And that, I thought, was surreal enough, the fact that he even knew who I was. Oh, he's, and a, su- he's a super fan. Yeah. He's a big fan. Super and so, because he... As he's often told many people on our network, ESPN was like his way of relieving stress. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, it exactly. was his way. Like I he mean, would watch he us. aged like a goddamn. Oh my god. But have you seen how he looks since he left? No, I haven't. He out here living his best life. I, I seen. I seen. I seen him uh, on the surfboard Man, and <laughs> he's doing his thing. Because I, what I didn't realize is that as a as a president, they don't allow you to engage in those activities for fear you may hurt yourself. And you can't hurt yourself as the president, right? <laughs> so first thing he did was like, yo, I'm surfing. I'm doing all this. Yeah, he out there hang gliding. He get this. He, he living his best life. That's but, awesome. So it's just, it's just so, it's just the juxtaposition of being, um, you know, somewhat, I guess, beloved by one president and hated by another one in like the span of a year. Right. Yeah. So, but that, but that's so, um, it's, it's, it's hard for me to fathom that, that a sitting president is so involved in social affairs like like he is like he he criticizes the media he criticizes people he criticizes like it's just it's insanity to me and his apologists to me are even worse because they're 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 normalizing uh egotistical like I, I, I've never seen anything like this. Like human beings. Well, it's it's, <laughs> it's put um, it's put journalism in a a very awkward position because at sports. I'm mean, just sports in general. Like you're not used to. Yeah, certainly, there are presidents who love sports, mm-hmm. and and that's usually the the vantage point in which we cover. He it likes from. NASCAR. I guarantee you, like NASCAR. <laughs> so, like you know, George W. Bush. He loved baseball. Right. right? He was a baseball owner for uh, for a period. So. And, you know, President Obama loved college basketball. Right. So we're used to it from that standpoint. But then you have a president who has openly attacked the NFL, Mm -hmm. openly attacked NFL players, openly attacked LeVar Ball. You want to talk about, like, what's going to be a strange thing to read in the history books? Jesus Christ. It's like the president and LeVar Ball. Like, what? (laughs) Like, that actually happened? Oh, my God. So that has put, you know, those of us who cover sports for a living where even though politics has always been in sports and which aggravates yeah. me greatly about having yeah. these conversations about Colin Kaepernick when people are like stick to sports okay but the, you'll you'll sit there and and talk about how Muhammad Ali was the greatest athlete you've ever and seen see, that's, that's my, and it's like that, oh but now and it, it's just amazing how we repeat the same stupidity amazing yeah. how we <clears throat> history history um is is more kind to uh trailblazers than the now is it always mm-hmm. has been like i had uh john carlos was on my podcast which was super dope um and i was just extremely honored to have him on there but here was a man who and this was at a time where i couldn't drink out of the same water fountain as, as a white man and he put up his fist and people have the exact same narrative that they're saying today it's the exact same narrative and i i don't know how we move on from that and how people don't have any kind of empathy and i i have a, a an ongoing saying i think people in general are fucking stupid <laughs> i really do man i just do i think i think people uh don't thoroughly uh understand why they think the things they think i think people don't research their opinions I think it's it's a in today's climate is is the worst because it's just clickbait. You'll read a headline and oh, well, that's the truth. And as and it's, this is fucking crazy to me is we grow up and we hear people saying, "Don't believe what you hear in the news. Don't believe this. Don't believe that." But that's what all the fucking that's all they believe. It's insanity, though. Like I don't understand people, and I'm trying my best to be an optimist. Right. Help me out, cause I'm I'm I mean, on the brink of jumping off this bridge of saying fuck humanity. <laughs> like people are always trying to pull me back. Like no nah, man, like you got charity, yeah, you got charities, man. You got good people. Like no, like this shit is whack. It's like I think there's a a, a large percentage of people um, who seem to be quite comfortable being ignorant. 
and that's hard to watch. Yeah, you know, and especially somebody like uh, you know you that is that is an information seeker who loves to be educated, who loves to learn. A lot of p- people out here don't love to learn. Um, I don't understand it. I don't either. Like I, I just I've never <laughs> had that mentality. Oh, that, but like I think part of the reasons why we have so we as a country struggle and will continue to struggle with racism and discussing race is because people get defensive because if if they acknowledge the extent of which racism exists in this country then that means they played a part. That means you were complicit in right. some way. Right. And that's tough. Right. Like nobody wants to admit that. To like face that mirror. Nah. So when you talk about like white privilege, right? It's like, that's why the first, it's like it brings out all levels of defensiveness because that means that, oh, I actually benefited from a racist system. Yeah, right. you did. Right. And nobody's asking you to give back everything you have, right. but we are here to say, acknowledge this exists. Right. Fix it. Try to fix it. <clears throat> right? It's a tough conversation to have with people. Um, and so what I like to do is I like to hear, uh, both sides of the arguments. Right. So I, I, I listen, I follow like right wing media, like super, really? super right wing. How do you keep your sanity? But I mean, <laughs> I, I've, I've unfollowed plenty and I, and I, and I keep, I, I pull myself back in just, just for the mere fact that I think it's healthy to have that dose of, of balance. Right in my in my life, cause like I'm, I'm I would I would call myself liberal, but I'm like middle liberal, like middle left is is what I would call myself. I'm like super left wing, uh, because I think there's bullshit on both sides, and totally a, a lot of the right wing rhetoric rhetoric <laughs> rhetoric is um the uh the pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality mm-hmm. like it's not that it's like there's people out here making it and yada yada and i think chris rock and i was talking to my mother about this last night is chris rock had a great bit about this it was like he <clears throat> he was talking about he he moved into the neighborhood he moved into and he looked to the left and there was a dentist and he looked to the right and there was a doctor and like he had to be chris rock in order to get there that means he had to be one of the greatest of all time. And I remember that because he said Mary J. Blige lived in his yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, and yeah, he was yeah. like, she had to be yeah, only J. like one of the greatest R&B singers Yeah, so he, he had one of the, the greatest R&B singers of all time, one of the greatest comedians of all time, just to live in the same neighborhood that these people are living in. And I, I feel the same way. I'm in, I'm, in a, I'm in a great neighborhood right now, but like I had to be the 1% of the 1%. And and for people to 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 understand that, it's it's... You can't unless you're you walking in it, and that's why empathy is so important. And that's why I like I, I keep referring back to this this podcast I had with um, uh, her name was Callie Wright, and she was a transgender woman, and I was so uh, hell bent on arguing with her, with her when she when she got on, but like listening to her story and 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 hearing what she went through, it changed my entire uh, worldview about that fight is what it, what it is mm-hmm. and <clears throat> people don't aren't going to uh feel you unless they feel you mm-hmm. and so do i mean what do you feel is going to rid us of the, because racism is is in the it's in the it's in the foundation of america mm-hmm. so what do you what do you think is going to rid us of that the only way we can ever truly make any real I mean, we've made progress in racism, so I don't want to completely lose sight of it. But it's been very tangible, you right. know, like, oh, we can all drink from the same water fountain. Yeah. yeah we yeah. can all ride together. Like, there's <laughs> <laughs> very tangible things. Right. But, I mean, quite honestly, like, white people have to just be as invested. They have to be just as invested in get, getting rid of it as we are. Right. And I just find that's not the case, is that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of white people who are really, really comfortable with the way things are. Yeah. And black people have been talking about race a long time. Right. Like, it ain't nothing for us to talk about racism. We're all. like, okay, it's our daily existence. Like, yeah. our daily conversations that we have with our friends the and family. We talk about it all day. Not a problem. So I went to a uh, um, a restaurant in, I was in Manhattan, right across the street from Trump Tower, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I took my mother to Central Park yesterday and I, I went to a restaurant and you you walk in and you just get these looks right and she uh, we talked about it like i'm used to this shit because I, I go to you know lavish restaurants you know from time to time because i enjoy that good food yeah enjoy good <laughs> it's, it's okay <laughs> enjoy life yeah um but like uh she she felt the looks and and she asked me she's like how do you, how does that like how do you deal with that like because we're, we're walking in and people are like 
and you just get that feeling and it's mm-hmm. it's it's insane it's 2017 that this shit is still going on but um you, you you're trying to rationalize it in your head like these people are just ignorant but how, she she was asking me like how do you how do you deal with that and i just don't give a shit like right. I, they can't i'm like i'm me but i'm still eat it is what it is <laughs> i came in there with a hoodie on right. like it is what it is um but america's a funny place man because we 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 I, I would not want to live anywhere else, right? And so that's that's the net the, the narrative. They're like, well, if you don't like it, leave. Like that's how they like to say it. But like, I, I I love this place. But for them to think that there isn't any progress to make, for people to think that I don't say them, but for people to think that there isn't any progress to make is is asinine to me. It's stunning um, because, and they also don't seem to understand that like you know love love is correction, right? Mm. You know, you got kids, you love them. But when they do wrong, you like, I got to correct you. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you love me any less. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I look at this country the same way. Yes, it's a it's a great country. It's provided a lot of people with a lot of opportunity. Right. But <clears throat> at the same time, there are things we can we can be better. Like right. we just can. It's like and there's no excuse for us not to be. And I think, you know, that black experience, like a lot of people, as you, you keep saying this word, and it's so true. They just don't have the in- empathy. They don't care. You know, I've said this about the the protests, um, the player protests and the reaction to them, the reaction to Colin Kaepernick, the people that suddenly and, you know, you've played in a thousand games when that national anthem is played. You got people going to the bathroom. Right. You got people yelling, right. showing all manner of disrespect during the national anthem. Oh, of course. But suddenly, all of a sudden, everybody is acting like this is just some unchallenged, you know, unchallenged bit of ceremony in our country and i'm like you're so caught up in the ceremony that you don't even care about the cause because you don't care about the cause 100 percent. that's what it's all about it's like at the end of the day <clears throat> it's about who's you, saying it's like, not about what you don't saying. even like it's not even about the flag it's not about the anthem it's about the fact that you just generally want black people to shut the fuck up uh, that's, that's all, just the, and, that's just the pure and, part and of it's, it and it's, it's, it's black <laughs> ath- like athletes like they hate black athletes for some reason like i i, I Cause I was I was one of the one of the first players to uh, participate in the in the uh, protest with 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 Colin and I can remember like the death threats I remember like all of this stuff being and I'm like do you really give a, that much of a fuck about the national anthem like do you care like that but people don't care man and that's 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 my problem is that like people don't actually give a shit about what they claim to give a shit about they just pick sides just like we was talking about earlier like you just pick the political side and the political party that you're associated with and whatever they riding for I'm riding for and like they don't care Forget about right and wrong no it's yeah. not it's not about right and wrong it's yeah. not about accuracy mm-hmm. it's just about which I hate that I hate that shit on the left as well though I hate I hate oh. that. I, it's 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 staunch in both sides but like when you're dealing with issues that are as polarizing as as, as that protest was, um, it's 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 hard to 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 stomach that shit. Like, and, and 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 as you mentioned about how history looks back on things, it's like we're gonna look back on this uh, twenty years from now. It may not even take that long, but I'll just pick twenty for the purposes of this conversation. And as a society, we should be wholly embarrassed that. A man was basically kept out of football because he wanted people, he wanted uh, the police to stop killing unarmed black people. It's not the great. I mean, like, why as a citizen in this country would you want and be held accountable? Unchecked. Right. Held accountable. Why would you want unchecked state sanctioned executions? Why would you want that? I don't understand that shit. (laughs) I think if you look at the statistics, I don't have my Wi-Fi on right now, but if you look at the statistics, like... Police killings in America is like by far oh, we, we, than any other country. And, we are winning and, the gold in that Olympic category. That's what I'm saying, and, and it's insane to me that people are like, oh, like all of them are justified. Like all of them. Like how how in other countries are are is it low? Like, I'm talking about like in the in the tens, in the twelves, thirteens. Like I believe for the, in England, for the police year, don't even carry. They don't carry guns; they carry tasers. So yeah. it's like societies that are not even policed with this level of violence. Yeah. And I'm not saying I'm not saying they don't have a hard job because it is a hard job being a police officer. Um, and we have the utmost. Everybody has the utmost respect for police officers. It was never about that, right. and it's not about not having some cognizant 
um, you know, level of understanding what they deal, the level of stress they deal with in their right. job. Right. And when you think about the level of stress they deal with versus right. what they're getting paid, it's it's kind of crazy we even ask people to do that right like it, right it really is it, it really, really is, is right is. so with that being said i think it's there's just, a lot of reform that has to go on i oh, think i think there's 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 training programs that need to be our criminal justice system probably needs to be blown up oh, overall 100, for 100%, a lot of different reasons 100%. especially when you talk about mass incarceration but um you know with the police in general i mean this happened in detroit and i think this is a microcosm of what has happened in a lot of places and while we're seeing a certain level of escalation they list they lifted the residency requirement in detroit meaning that you don't have to be a police officer that lives in the city of detroit to be a police officer in detroit no that's the worst so, exactly that's so you're getting worst. people who frankly do not have a lot of interaction interaction with detroit residents yeah. suddenly in charge of policing them. yeah that's the, no, that's, and, that's uh, a recipe for disaster it's a recipe for disaster when police it's been shown through various studies when police actually have to live in those communities that they police they, when care. they, they care they care and when they talk to residents and the whole you know beat cop thing works right. like <clears throat> knowing the business owners in the community, knowing the people there, like it works, it builds a level of trust and that trust has been destroyed. And I think because of this lack of um, this lack of curiosity or at least this lack of this will unwillingness to historically look at how we got to this place. A lot of people who are chiming in about their disgust for the player protests have no sufficient information. They don't understand the history of the police and the black community and how it goes so far back. It's yeah. so yeah. it's been so bad for a long time right. because and that's what I was telling you about, like in order for this needle to move in racism, white people have to be put it like this non black people. I won't even pinpoint white people have to be just as invested in seeing it's solved because, you know, the reality is like the police force for a long time, their number one job was to keep us away from them. Yeah. Period. Yeah. By what, what by whatever means. Yeah. Right. Is like to police over police our neighborhoods, keep us in check so that we didn't bother people in the suburbs That's so true. that we didn't move outside our bubble. Like you're going to be here and we're going to we're going to crack your neck. Mm -hmm. That was literally the existence still is in a lot of places. And so when people are trying to understand why there's this level of distrust that is part of what has led to where we are now yeah. it's like historically we never atoned for the whole reason that the police were there to begin with yeah uh, and, and that's why um I actually said this on one of my last podcasts was the uh the start of the of the crips um in la with uh, uh tookie williams and raymond washington with the bloods was to counteract the policing that was going on in those neighborhoods so those neighborhoods were uh they were getting bullied by police officers they were getting killed like i used to say this all the time like marvin gay in 1970 uh had a song uh, called inner city blues which is amazing if you haven't heard it go check it out but uh he said trigger happy policing that was one of the lines he said in there and I, and that was in the 70s so like from the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s to the 2010s the same narrative is being pushed by our communities are we fucking insane or what is going on? <laughs> nah, I mean, it's 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 hard for people who have never had to live that level of existence um, to understand that dynamic. And like, it's, it's crazy. They don't get it. They don't. And so it's like, <clears throat> like people love statistics and studies, uh, but only if it fits their narrative, right? So you look at the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice came out and said there was racism institutionally in Ferguson uh -huh. police Very in, detailed in, report. in Baltimore, mm -hmm. uh, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So these are police stations by our a government sanctioned study saying that there was uh, institutional racism in those police departments and people still have issues with saying that police are, 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 are not being held accountable for their, their crimes is what it is. Um, it's in, it's in, it's insanity to me, and the fact that that Colin did what he did, I was I was proud to be a part of that, because um, at first I was a little hesitant because I didn't understand what it was going to accomplish. But mm -hmm. everything that has been accomplished to this day, and so if you look at the what the NFL uh, offered to these to these players, which is in my opinion hush money. But so so what do you think about? Uh, uh, that that situation as far as what the NFL has has they're trying to step up to the plate and I think it's 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 basically what I've always said 
NFL is always they're they're not proactive; they're reactive. Mm -hmm. um, and so, w what do you think about the NFL's uh, reaction to the protests so thus far? So, I talked about Malcolm Jenkins last week, and um, I thought it was really unfair that he got labeled a sellout. That was uh, that was unfair, right? However, you know, here's the thing: is that um, there was the tricky thing about this protest is that. It was a personal decision made by Colin. He had his reasons. He had a very detailed plan of why, why he chose to do it. Right. It was never really designed to be a movement. You know what I mean? It's like Messed up, yeah. it wasn't really designed for that because it, it is such a personal decision. Like you said, you even thought like, OK, you had to, you know, go through your thought process. And, and and as you said, you thought, like, what is this going to accomplish? Right. Right. So most protests have an end game. Right. Right. And so it wasn't like it was organized. It wasn't like the Montgomery bus boycott right, where right. they had end game. They were like, okay, we want desegregation on the buses. <clears throat> we want more black drivers. We want this. See, we want see, that. And that's the only thing I think if, like, if, 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 I, if I had any criticism of the protest was like, Colin's not as, as vocal as, as I think he should be. Mm -hmm. Like you have the attention of the country. Mm -hmm. Like go ahead and say what you have to say. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the only thing I like. And, and granted, I think, I, I think he's going to go down as a legend. I think what he did was valiant and brilliant all of that but like talk to us like what's happening uh yeah i mean i i think at this point um you know i his, there's a certain power in the silence but i'm with you at, at some point um there is something important things he should probably vocalize mm -hmm. so wasn't really created to be a movement uh, to to ask you a question as part of my answer had when he when <clears throat> it first was realized that he was gonna you know that he took a knee and why he was doing it had someone said to you then that this is going to result in the NFL um, coordinating with players and giving a hundred million dollars toward a variety of their chosen social justice causes, would you have considered that a victory? Mm. <clears throat> that's 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 a hard question to answer um, because. Mm. Whew. See what I I'm think, saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so I understand what you're saying as far as like Malcolm Jenkins. I don't think, yeah, him being vilified for whatever people are vilified. Would it have been a victory to me? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say no. Okay. And I would say no for the simple fact that I think the NFL does that. What they do is they, um. It would be like it would be like silencing. It, it, is it contingent on anything? Nope. It's not contingent on anything. Nope. It's just so I. They can, hope I can... it's one of those things where they're hoping it influences players Stopping, to stop. Stop kneeling. But that's the thing is like because this was never put together as an organized movement, you can't control the desires of hundreds of players, right? right? Like Eric Reed is still going to do what he's doing, right? So that's not going to do you know anything what, you know, to that. I think I think the pro this is the problem, <clears throat> and I <clears throat> I would. I wouldn't stop kneeling and, and, and I, you know, I retire when I retire, but I would have never stand for the national anthem again. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I, why I would never stand for it again, because what this protest did <clears throat> for me was it, 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 Opened my eyes to the history of the national anthem. I had no clue that it was, third stanza. It was, I had no, I, I had no <laughs> idea slave that these that these two or three verses yeah, were written were left from. Out. Yeah, I had yeah. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And so, if I knew that before, I wouldn't have stood in the first place. Right, because it is a it is a song instructing slave owners to to kill their slaves. Like it is in, like it's fucking evil. So I would I wouldn't have stood anyway. So. If 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 the NFL says we'll give you X amount of dollars if you guys stand up, I, me, I don't, I can't I can't speak for these other cats. I'm not standing anyway. It has nothing to do with money anymore. Now it has to do with like reform the criminal the criminal justice system. Uh, we overwhelmingly get uh, more time for for mm, the same crimes absolutely. that that people of non color get we get harassed more. <clears throat> we get all of it. Hundred percent. Um. So 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 all these all these are are statistically. Uh, verifiable. So if you ask me, no, I would I would not consider that a victory. The well, only victory that happens is is in legislation. You're right, and um, again, that's the tricky part about this particular you know protest slash movement is um, 
it doesn't really have uh, there's no direct connection between what's happening in the NFL and criminal justice. Right. Right. So it's not like it's a thing where you can say, like, we want the NFL. I mean, certainly the NFL has legislative influence. Right. They do. There's no question about it. Um, They have lobbyists. They have, you know, they have things that they want to accomplish from a government standpoint. Um, I think the better, frankly, protest probably would have been to do it on behalf of Colin, like until he's let back in the league. Mm. That's because that's something the NFL directly can control. Oh, 100 percent. And, and this is there, there's, a, there's a lawsuit pending right now. Yeah, he's for- he's he's alleging uh, collusion. And um, like if the players did that on behalf, then that's something that's happening in your league. That you can have a voice about. You know what's fucked up is I I know you know I know a, a bunch of cats in the league, man, and uh, I'm never would not name names, but like you're asking. It goes back to my earlier point where ninety nine. I would say ninety nine. The majority of America is fucking stupid, and you're asking players that are that have never been <clears throat> conscious about political affairs in America to to all of a sudden do it and it's it's not going to happen right and, and I, I hate to say that about my fellow athletes but it's the truth people but it has nothing it's, it's more or less not necessarily it doesn't have to do with athletes per se but it has something to do with uh our general public our general public in essence doesn't care about truth people don't care about truth people don't care about why they believe the things that they believe so they never research these things. And so we're asking athletes who just are trying to are coming from ghettos who there's 70 percent. I think 70 percent of the athletes in, in the NFL are black and the majority of them come from ghettos and come from uh, places that, uh, you know, un- unfavorable circumstances that are just trying to get their family mm-hmm. out, of, out of those circumstances. <clears throat> then we're asking them to take political stances on they don't they don't really have the, the foundation. Like I grew up in a in a, my, my father was Muslim. And he was uh, the part of the FOI in American Muslims. So those American Muslims are 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 different, like uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan. So like <clears throat> you have to know your your Bible front to back, and you have to know your Quran front to back, and you have to know history, and you have to know politics. Like it's a different religion, and that's the that's the climate I grew up in. And so th- that's why I'm so politically aware. It's because I was made I was made aware of these these subjects as a kid. Um, not everybody grew up like that. Some people just they're just trying to keep the lights on. Uh, our our educational system is shot in our neighborhoods. Oh, it's so it's, bad. It's terrible. It's so bad. Um, and so we're asking these we're asking these young cats to take stands for things that they don't even understand. And you're asking them. I mean, I think the economic the economic realities are something that you can't really ignore. Is that if you've worked your whole life to get your family out of a certain situation. And then once you do that and you're at a level of, of some level of comfort, you are asked to jeopardize all that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't say that I blame him for that. Yeah. But here's the thing um, to keep in mind. And I've had to remind myself of this Austin also as somebody who also like you grew up in a politically aware family. There's a reason it was only one Martin. Mm. And one Malcolm. Mm. And there's only one Colin Kaepernick. Mm. They're not supposed to be just walking the earth, right, <laughs> okay? Right, right, right. And sometimes um, you need those people. One Muhammad Ali, like, you know, one John Carlos, one Tommy Smith. Like, there's a reason why there's not a plentiful number of them. Right. Is that you need one to be the example. To spark. To spark others. And then in wherever place you are, whatever you can do, you do it. And so I look at, you know, what happened with the NFL and the money. Uh, Because, look, it does take money to fix a lot of these things. 100%. Uh, And I'm with you. Like, it should not be contingent on silence. And I'm sure the the NFL, that isn't written in there that they have to do that. Like, they have no obligation to do that. They're just hoping for it. I don't think necessarily... And, uh, you know, I, I wrote about this. It's like, I don't think the NFL, they don't have to believe in the cause. Like, that's not required. They don't. No, it's not required. Because <laughs> trust me, don't. when the, the Montgomery bus boycott, which might, you know, be the most successful boycott we've ever seen. Right. Opp- oppressors don't have a change of heart. It's not okay. where it works. Usually what you have to do is leverage the men. 
<clears throat> leverage them in so that they have to change. Right. Not because they feel like morally obligated, but because they feel financially obligated. Yeah. And if pockets, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the way it works. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for the players is, frankly, they should have pushed for more money, to be honest. But um, for them, so the the drawback, and and I I, I, I vaguely read this story because I just try to stay away from that shit now. But I vaguely read the story. So correct me if I'm wrong. But the I think the drawback from the players that pulled out of that. uh, the coalition, the yeah. coalition. I wanted. I didn't. Wasn't sure what that. <laughs> yeah, the going. players' coalition. <clears throat> yeah. The players' coalition. So the so the players that 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 drew out of that was because the NFL offered to take money from <clears throat> existing uh, charities like breast cancer awareness and, mm-hmm. and the military. and shovel it over. So it's like like not a fresh donation. However, right. again, for what it's worth, the league responded to those accusations and what it did, and they said that's not true. Now, I, again, right. I'm just. That's yeah, what they said. Yeah, no, okay. Just the facts, man. We That's here. what they said, right? So, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think that there is, um, y- you could call it naivete. Um, Anquan Bolden, Malcolm Jenkins, the guys that remain, you know, their heart is really in a good place. I do. I, I agree. They're well intentioned. I agree. As as you know, playing in the league, the, the, the trust between the players and the league has been broken for a long time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's just hard to guys for like Eric Reed, and I completely respect his position and understand why he has such reservations. I agree. Is that it's hard for them to <laughs> Especially say because he's close with Colin too. Yeah, he is, and and he knows he's he's privy to to probably some some background that we are not. Yeah. Um, and probably seen some things that we we haven't. I think the the key thing that he pointed out, and I, I is like they're going to have a board where the league will actually have more say so than the players. In terms of the distribution of the money, that's a problem. Yeah, of course. It that's is. a huge problem. Of and is. I think while as an, well intentioned as Anquan Bolden and Malcolm Jenkins may be, they they better watch for the hook. Yeah. Like straight up. Yeah. Like why like <laughs> you, yeah. you, your your heart may be in the right place, doesn't mean theirs is. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta <laughs> account for that but as you deal with them. They don't give a fuck. And it's clear that they don't give a fuck. That Jerry Jones stunt when he uh, took a knee before the national anthem was <laughs> only to come was, out and say if you have a pro if you boycott or protest yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna then, get then, benched then, then, he, then he cut somebody because they because they protested well, too um, that was that was sort of what a lot of people imply there's some backstory okay. there like okay. I'm not sure if that was related but I'll say this okay it's a guy most people aren't familiar with right right you mean to tell me that Dak Prescott took a knee, he was going to cut him? No, nah, he wasn't. You going to bench him? No, nah, Ezekiel Elliott? Okay. Uh, no, he, he wasn't. So it was an empty case, threat. Man. And for, for me, my biggest issue with him doing <laughs> that was that he openly challenged the manhood of his players, and it was not required. That was that was the only problem. And... Like, you can't do that. And they none of the Cowboys were <laughs> engaging in the protests, really. None of them were. Zero. And, and, and see, that was Des so... Dez Bryant said right after they, they all, uh, everybody knelt that one weekend and locked arms, they all said, or he said, we're going to be standing for the national anthem. So, so it was, was no, totally unnecessary. Was no, and see, that's, that's what kills me about these coaches, man. These coaches that... Uh, like uh, who was that other cat? I think it was in college. I think it was like Dabo Sweeney or somebody like that. Uh, uh, but Clemson, when he had his, um, he gave his thoughts about <laughs> protest right. and summoned Martin Luther King, which right. I was like, right. mm. like, you have no fucking clue, man. And that's like these these, these fake woke ass uh, white folk be killing me, man. Uh, no disrespect to the white people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you listen to my Scarface podcast, but there's a difference between white people and white folk, man. <laughs> white people and it's white hilarious. Folk. He, Scarface is hilarious, but um, the 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 climate is heavy in sports and politics as it's ever been as I've been alive. Mm-hmm. I, I was born in 1986, so th- this is definitely the pinnacle, mm-hmm. right? So, what is the um the talk amongst sports casters sports journalists as far as hot button issues like what is the talk about this climate because it's it, i mean i've never seen it before we um i mean it's i think we're we're struggling to to try to figure out a way to um remain neutral at a time where neutrality is a farce right right and um 
look, I, regardless of, of what I do and by extension who I represent, as in ESPN, it's like I'm a citizen in this country. Right? <laughs> and so it is hard for me on a lot of days to come in and act like I give a shit about, you know, the Jags, you know, <laughs> being uh, one of the best defenses in the NFL. And they are, though. Shout out to they them. They are. They are. Like, <laughs> legit. Like, legit, they are. For so, sure. no disrespect to the Jags or the Jags fans out there. And I love Jalen Ramsey, man. That dude is crazy. <laughs> that dude, uh, Boye, that's my guy. I used to play with him. So, but there are some days with all the events and uh, all the trauma as a nation that we're going through to come in there and just act like, Sports are important. Right. There's just so just it's just hard. And you know what? And and, and I'm not the only one that feels that way. It's a lot of people like it, right. I, it, the side conversations that we have um, oh, at the I, network. Like when imagine. we buy the water cooler, like, dude, <laughs> did you see this? <laughs> Look, we just have we have we have to have five minutes of outrage. It. Like just just to feel healthy. Like I got to get this off my chest. A little, a little break room. <laughs> a little break room where we like, Shh. man. I'm telling you, me and Kitty, babe. Right. That's my dog. Like me, and Kitty. We have we have our five minute outrage break like every day. Like right. we either text each other or when I see him at work, you know. And he, Kitty's so funny because he was like, he every time we end a conversation, he's always like, just remember when it goes down. I'm with the black people. Hey. I was like, Kitty. <laughs> shout out to Kitty, man. <laughs> As Kitty said, he wanted to be the host of the Woke Awards. I was like, all right. Host of the Woke Awards. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think everybody has to have, we're, we got to have those moments. And unfortunately, because, you know, look, we can't ignore the function of our job. There's a lot of sports fans who are, frankly, looking to us for an escape. And that's, and that's, the, that's the point I wanted to make <clears throat> was uh, sports are important. And the reason why they were important was because, and like like I said, I was born in 1986, so pre 1986, I, I didn't experience that. Uh, but the reason why they were important was because it was a middle ground mm -hmm. for political America, whether you Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, whatever. If you like the Bills, if you like the Jags, if you like woo -woo -woo, <clears throat> sports brought everybody together. And when you see your sports getting political, that's why people start pulling out. <clears throat> and what I and I want to what I what I what, what, what I wanted to ask you was as far as you know you hear Trump talking about the ratings and the viewership and things like that are they really in decline? I, I cuz I have never really looked into it. I don't I don't really I'm done fact checking that man. <laughs> <clears throat> so I've never really looked into no, it. No, I mean the ratings for the NFL um have they were starting to take a little bit of a dip before the Colin Kaepernick right. protest started, right? This is about consumption habits and technology. And I agree. I, I, it has nothing to I do with I said that without anything. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with the protests. And and as you as you know, people out here ain't that committed to be like, you know what? I'm so tired of these players kneeling for the anthem. I'm just not watching the NFL. Yeah. Like, do really it's like three no it's yeah three it's like I, I believe a, and, and look i'm not taking for granted the people <laughs> who are not watching because colin isn't in the league there's mm -hmm. a huge amount of people who consider themselves fitting in that right you know category like one of my girls is like a, a huge cowboys fan and she is not watching the nfl all season because of how the nfl has treated colin kaepernick right, right? right all that being said a lot of it has to do with Oversaturation. NFL does not want to admit this, right? Thursday night football is the stupidest shit. You got Thursday nights. You got it's it's on a lot, and you have Sunday night. Like it just at some point you have to worry about whether or not the oversaturation is like really Mark, influencing and taking out the, your your product. Mark, you know? Mark Cuban said that shit, and I remember when he said ago. it. I thought I was like, <clears throat> man, he crazy. Like this. I didn't the, think so though. Then when but he, said he was it, right. <laughs> He was, he was right. Everything he, was he said was, was right. He because said the NFL is going to bite off more than they could chew. Now, our, there's something to be said about exclusivity. It is about making people. They, they say this in our business a lot. Always leave people wanting more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They say that a lot. Right. And so my thing is like, OK, so you have that part of it. But we also have to keep in perspective this. What is considered low ratings for the NFL, any sport would kill for. Right. Kill for these ratings. Like you're talking about. 
Oh, only 17 million people watch the football game. Right, nobody. It's watching. down from 20. <laughs> like, relax. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I mean, you're it's, still going to get those, those contracts. 17 mil is pretty good, right? Yeah, right. And I understand um, that they are trying to figure out a way to, to, to you know, stem the tide. That's why you, you see the shorter commercial breaks, the 30-second commercials mm, that they no, work that. into yeah. the game. Like, you see, you everybody's seen the double box. And, like, it'll be a 30-second commercial plan, but you still see what's happening on the field. Right. Like, that's become one of their new ways to try to create this. Right. One thing I noticed, and I don't know if you noticed the same thing, when I talked to, like when I was growing up, sports were everything, football was everything mm-hmm. in particular, but I feel like a lot of young kids don't feel that way about football. And I don't know if that's just my imagination, but they don't feel like football was like a religion, right. your favorite topic. <clears throat> I know football was like in a religion, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't feel like younger kids connect with the game that way. Yeah, I, I, w- I would agree. And I think it's a it's definitely a generational thing mm-hmm. and i think what it has to do with is the rule implementations that have been put in place um it, it like it was super violent when i was growing up and mm-hmm. like I, that's what i fell in love with right mm-hmm. and then as i'm going through it it's like not as cool as i thought it was <laughs> Definitely look better from afar. <laughs> definitely, people people feel that man. Families feel that, and and now uh, you see things like CTE, the concussion studies, mm-hmm. and NFL trying to hide those concussion studies. Um, I think that this is my personal opinion. I don't think the NFL will be super popular in like 50, 60 years because of the science that's coming out on concussions, uh, and. <clears throat> I think why we fell in love with the game was because it was violent and we loved that and we loved the aspect of men being men and going like that was what football was to me. And now all of these rule changes, the flags, <clears throat> um, I, 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 they, they, they tried to bring the celebrations back. They took that away for a while, but they, they're, they're bringing it back, trying to let the players have fun again. And I think that's their way of, of understanding what's going on. But I think at the end of the day, like I'm not letting my my sons. I got two sons. That I'm not letting them play no football. Mm. No question. Mm. Um, your dad took all those he- <laughs> headshots. You don't need. You don't need those. Uh, <clears throat> and as the science gets more and more clear on that, I think that I don't know about viewership, but I think participation in football is gonna start to dwindle. That's gonna be a huge, huge problem. And so I, because of that, like when I. You you know what young kids when I talk to them now, they love basketball. Yeah, I mean and, they and love soccer. They <clears> love soccer. Yeah, like a lot. Like soccer's man, man lot, because of video <clears> games, <throat> man. FIFA, man. Everybody's FIFA's cracking. Yeah, man, see what I'm cracking. saying? It's like they they FIFA's love cracking. that. But when you look at the NBA, who even though you have players that speak out all the time, right. you know, from LeBron to Steph, Steve Kerr, Pop. You know, I mean, and, and granted, the fan base is not quite the same as it is for the NFL, right? right? But their ratings are soaring. Right. And a big reason is like, it's a one, you need a basketball. It's a global game. Right. Automatically, right? Then you have, there's a level of inclusiveness in the NBA. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody like Giannis is like one of the biggest stars in the league. You know, mm-hmm. you got the Greek freak. You have all these like, it's a coolness about the NBA that people <clears throat> love. And that product, like, even though, you know, that, that's one of those like, get in out. Like where the NBA might be, 20 years from now is going to be astronomical. I agree. And like they're on the upside like the, big time. <clears throat> what's different to me about the NFL in juxtaposition with the, N- at the NBA is I've never seen the NBA being or having this much cultural influence totally as it true. does now. It's it's weird. Um, and I think social media has everything to do with it. And I think the, the crux of that is the visibility of the NFL of the NBA players. Yeah, I mean they're automatically an NBA player walks in the room. Like if you over six three, they're gonna assume you, you play, know him. You play know the league, him. right? Yeah, you know and you know it is like their faces are everywhere. But I do think it's something to be said too about how the league is run. Like Adam Silver is a very progressive commissioner. Um him and Michelle Roberts, the players association president, like they work in lockstep. Like there's a level of trust there. See, right? I had this um conversation <clears throat> I had DeAndre Hopkins on my on my podcast. And he's like the best receiver in the NFL. And I was telling him that the NFL doesn't market their players like the NBA markets their players. Not as individuals. And it needs to be like right. that. They market teams. The, yeah. Right? Because teams have always... 
that's you know you, you know you have generations of Steelers fans and yeah. generations of Cowboys fans. Like that's teams have always it has is always worked that way. Right. But they don't allow. Football. That's not the world we live in anymore. It's though. not, and football itself is not exactly prone to individuality. Like everything in football is about, me? right? <laughs> you know you this. <laughs> you football is all about conformity. It's all about, Man. you know, one team, one fight. You know what I'm saying? And I think that might be the struggle that NFL is having right now. Mm-hmm. Like you live in a world of individuality. And I think that's what the beautiful thing uh, uh, about technology has brought. It has brought people uh, to themselves and they understand like, so if <clears throat> whatever I'm going through, whatever's going on with myself, I can find somebody that can relate to me on the internet that has never been before, right? Mm-hmm. And so that individuality of, of of loving yourself and expressing yourself how you want to express yourself is 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 heightened in today's society. And the NFL hates that shit, and they're trying to embrace that shit. But that I, there's like this uh, conscientious objection with, with themselves. They don't. They don't like because it's like such an old boy network. It's an old boy system that where like you, you shut up, you do what you're told, and this is how we win games. Right. <clears throat> The NBA doesn't operate that way. They allow, you know, um, their players to be individual. Like, I'm pretty sure Adam Silver never had one conversation about LeBron after he tweeted um, that about the president. Of course not. Or Kevin Durant when he said it in a more coarse way about the president. (laughs) They didn't have one conversation at all. And uh, they kind of... Each player in the NBA, this is where guaranteed contracts will get you too. It's like man, <laughs> that's man, that'll get you this man. too. It's like they're they're treated like individual corporations, right? Oh, and man. like LeBron runs LeBron, <laughs> right? And you ain't because telling LeBron. It's, it's nothing. because the NBA understands that their players are the market. They're, li- they're uh, they, the league. They are the league. Yes. but like NFL treats the NFL players like like cattle like we'll move because they in, feel we'll like y'all out. are ultimately replaceable and we are but so are like but like <clears throat> you're you're replaceable but like <clears throat> if everybody organizes you're not replaceable right right so but players never understand the leverage and it's the same uh, qualm I have with the NCAA is like the cats you're holding their hopes and dreams over their head but th- if they uh, if they all understand if those young 18 19 year old kids understand that you are the product you're the product you are the they product they can't do anything without you say say <clears throat> and and it like i i it was uh this was like 2013 14 12 something i don't know what i said i took money uh illegally from the NC, uh, I, I hate saying illegally because it wasn't <laughs> fucking illegal. No, it's I didn't not. sell drugs. No, <clears throat> no. but they but, but they it's make against people... the NCAA rule. Yeah, yes. so so it's against <laughs> the NCAA, NCAA rule. I said I took money, and um, they they flipped like people 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 flipped, and I'm like, okay, if if every single person in the NCAA says I have taken money illegally. What are you going to ban the whole... This, <laughs> you then, can't do anything. What are you going to do? Suspend everybody? <laughs> right. It's a fucking charade, man. And I, I get I get so sick of defending that shit to people who, are, who who use that circular reason. And that's why I say the majority of America is stupid because they don't care about what they think about. It's circular reason. Why are they amateur athletes? Because we don't pay them. Why don't we pay them? Because they're amateur. It's fucking insane. <laughs> well, I mean, the NCAA... When it was created, or when the, just the college sports system in general was created, it was never created with the intent it would ever become a billion dollar empire. Yeah, and, and the it dude just, that said, the dude that 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 I think the 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 founder of it mm-hmm. before he died, he said that like it just wasn't intended to be this. Right. But the the thing is, it's like um, you know, if you can create a business where all of the people in charge get all the money and the product gets none. It's That's insane. A pretty good business. So <laughs> how, do you, do you have any? <laughs> it's a great business. It's a great business if you're uh, the one in charge. We've like. seen it somewhere before. But <laughs> I, so, <laughs> so do you have any kind of like reservations about covering college sports because you know these cats are getting sh- like getting stiffed? Yeah, it's it's that's the the. the Probably the bizarre thing about being a journalism journalist is like there's a level of disassociation that takes place with what you cover. Right. Um, I mean, I've had to through the course of my career, have I've had to co- cover some really shitty people. Right. I mean, it's the facts. It's like, right. but I always feel like the my allegiance is to the information. Right. right. My allegiance is not to institutions, to teams, to players, to coaches. It's to the information. That's um, interesting. And telling the story that needs to be told right. and. 
for as much as, yes, like a lot of people, I have huge issues with the NCAA. I was among, uh, you know, probably a small subset of people who totally thought Leonard Fournette is last year should have just sat out. I think a lot of players should do that. Um, (laughs) Because it's like, but why? Like, they're still going to draft you. Like, you're not going to, it's not going to do it. So this brings brings me to an interesting point that I want to get your opinion on. Okay, so LeVar Ball is a very polarizing, and both of y'all have been banged, banged by the president, you know, taking shots at. So I like the cat. Mm -hmm. I love LeVar Ball. Some of his choices have me questioning that love sometimes. So you take your you take your son out of out of UCLA. Um, what is your opinion about that? Um, that's always it's always tough for me to discuss uh, Lavar Ball because I'm not a parent, and even if I was, it's like. It, it starts to go into an area where, like, you almost feel like you're telling somebody else how to raise their kids. Right. So you try to be careful around it. But <clears> I, I guess what I what I wonder is, you know, he vocalizes the fact that he wants all of his sons to play for the Lakers or them all to play basketball. And it's like he's so – and they're good – by all accounts, you know, people say they're good kids and they do well academically. I just – wonder like what's why you know what i mean like why is that so important you mm-hmm. know i'm like I'm not, i don't really get it i guess but right. it's not for me to get and on some level i do understand him pulling out, pulling him out of ucla because like look when they gave him that indefinite suspension right i mean i was thinking to myself like man that kid might not play again this year like legitimately he really might he really Did might they, is that what they threatened no it's just like indefinite suspensions i think that's the reason they said it so that there could be a loose timetable and they didn't they really there was because if you say oh he's suspended by 12 games then everybody's like oh only 12 games or oh that's too many you say indefinite it could be anything right and so that it creates a a less headlines but I guess with LeVar um, I looked at him as mostly sort of harmless if you will like almost like a wrestling character (laughs) like (laughs) you're like yeah like he's just he's a wrestling character to me but I hear you about you know, being a little concerned with some of the choices. And also I'll say, and this is for our community in particular, is like I find way too many of us willing to give him a cookie because he's a dad. It's like, hmm. like I find just just way too many people just being like, he's a black man. Cause, and I get it. We're hungry for those images. We're so, hungry. F- well, because a lot of times, you know, this happens in sports, especially in sports. It, it, some star athlete, they like the 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 trope of, you know, great star, you know, athlete, black athlete, and mama in their relationship. Right. Like, when everybody's like, well, where's the dad? And the dad could actually be in the picture, but that's not what the narrative of right. the story is, right? right? So I get that we're hungry for those images of strong black fathers, right? But, but it's, but it's kind of like, why are we going out our way to excuse everything he does just because he a a, a, a a strong black father? So, so like, this is my, always it, right. <laughs> I would, okay, so my my. My quarrel with it was this. So, like, I used to defend. I was like, yo, you have a dad. Because people were like, yo, LeVar Ball is this. Level. I'm like, yo, you have a dad who has has been there for his kids, has 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 been in their lives and taught them things that have got them to the point where they have gotten scholarships to UCLA, one of the most prestigious colleges in the nation. Uh, that was my defense of him. And now my now it's like... Okay, you're pulling your son out of UCLA, so the so the play is different now. Yeah. So it's it's hard for me to say I can't defend I can't defend that. Mm. I, like I'm like I'm trying to, but like I, because I, I love him, I love I, I love the 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 um uh the entrepreneurship. I love the you're doing your own thing. I, right. Like I love it, but but now like you pulling your kids out of UCLA. For whatever reason, um, yeah, that's why I said it's, it's hard to defend. It's, it's kind of like well, um, and you know, pushing this hoop dream, and I and I guess there's some part of me maybe because they their father is so much in the in the in the front of this is like, is that what they really want? Right, you know what I mean? There's a part of you that wants no telling. Yeah, yeah, Ain't like no you, we don't really know. That, they, they don't never do no interviews. I ain't never heard nothing from these cats. Right, it's like um, I, it's I like definitely you, bought three pairs of shoes though. You bought three pairs, hundred percent. Oh, absolutely, and some sandals. 
<laughs> they were super expensive. <laughs> but like, and this is why because. Uh, it was like it's like the Jay Z line, right? Why 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 would I buy Belvedere when Puff got some rock? So right. like we we always claim we want to uh, uh, help black people, help black people. But when our black people uh, provide some type of product, we always look down on it. Right. Like why am I going to buy a three hundred dollar pair of Gucci slippers when I can buy some Lonzo Ball slippers? Like fuck Gucci. I, I admire that. That's why I, I bought that. yeah. So I so I bought three pairs of, three pairs of shoes. And, Have and you got them? That's irrelevant. <laughs> Hey man, I'm just, I just, I, I'm not here to. That's I'm, irrelevant, man. I just want to know. I'm like, have you actually received them? Just curious. That's irrelevant, man. Because if you know, we want to support. Like we want to support, but uh, so it's like this. I'm so gonna need, so need like, you to so run me so my so shoes. So it's like I pay you that. You got a brother. Because here's the thing, Gucci. If you throw them 500, them shoes gonna be there in three days. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so so if you got a brother, you got a sister, and they have. Um, they have some faults. They have some, you know what I mean? I got you. We ain't going to air them out. <laughs> Big we, ball of brand. Big ball. <laughs> All right. Triple B's. We out here. Man, look, it, it's it's going to be. You ain't buying no big ball of shoes? No, no. You ain't no big baller. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm a, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not. <laughs> you know? I get it. Look, I, the people who have, who have, a lot of people have used that rationale and I, I, I truthfully understand because certainly maybe not with him there's certainly some black businesses I've stayed loyal to despite they trifling this and right. I'm like I'm, we gonna work through this but it's but it's it's it's, it's true it's true so so because I, I, I try to support black business all the time and I think it's important that we hold them to the same standards right of business yeah just you know basic customer service like, that's, hey, that's that's customer I'm service for. standards <laughs> nothing crazy you know Man. so i I'm, I'm with you on that i i did i did like the fact um generally speaking the probably the thing i most admired about lavar ball was like he wasn't willing to let his kids be pimped out that's right? true yeah. like i mean that's he true. really did take a uh, i thought a really good line in the sand um on, on that account it's like he he was like, look, you know, he he's taken a level of control over their careers um, and 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 he's just not going for the okie doke. He's not going for the for the the game and how it's played. And he's willing to play outside of those rules um, to accomplish what he wants to accomplish. Now, he may not see it this way. Um, I, you know, I've heard him say about like how his support um, like, hey, I'm, if I'm supporting you, then don't worry about everybody else. But like, look, he may not realize this or even care but yeah i mean his his boisterousness is has made it hard on on lonzo ball yeah, like it's, it's, it's clear on it. i mean he, it's <clears throat> clear like it, it but, really has you know what I, what I like about it is this what i like about it is um if he balls he's gonna be a legend right but if he doesn't like he's gonna be viewed as a bust but that spotlight your, your your pops put you in that spotlight. That's it, what I like about it, though. Oh, like, okay, say like say say my pops did that, right? Mm -hmm. And like I got undrafted, whatever the case may be, and I balled. Right, like, and still had the same career. You're like, a fucking legend now, and you're a legend. And it, and then some of it too is like we have to look at you know how we define success. Like from a basketball standpoint, if he's never the next Magic, which I'll be frank, I don't think he's gonna be the next Magic Johnson. All right? You know I like and tell me if I'm wrong because mm -hmm. your basketball knowledge is very extensive. Mm -hmm. I liken him to Penny. Penny, huh? That's interesting. You know, I, I, and I'll give all credit to um, my colleague for saying this, Jalen Rose. He made an interesting comparison that he saw in Lonzo Ball that everybody thought was a diss, but I think it's pretty accurate. He said that he thinks Lonzo Ball, his ceiling is Ricky Rubio. Ricky Rubio nice, though. That's what I'm saying. He's just like, no, nah, it wasn't a diss. He's like, Ricky Rubio, like, not known to have a great jump shot, right? All right? But... Great floor vision. Great floor vision. Excellent pla passer. Passer, great passer. Right. And it's like, you know what? If he became Ricky Rubio, Rubio, I think that would be a success. I don't look at him right now and see a transcendent player, right? I see somebody who could be a very important piece to how the Lakers move forward. And I don't. And I say, like, I, 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 do you I, see him being a transcendent I player? I do. I see him do being you? an all-star. and it's not. But that's not transcendent, though. See, an uh, all-star, I didn't say he could be an all-star. Okay, so what does transcendent all right, mean? Like, we get to find I, see, I, I see, Brand, like, Brandon Ingram. I think Brandon Ingram, that's the one. That's the you, one you that, like, 
that's the one the Lakers been waiting for, right? Um, that's interesting. He, his game, like the growth that from last he year. Definitely, is, oh yeah, my sure, goodness, sure, like that sure, kid is going sure, to be something for special. Sure, for sure. A transcendent player would be like LeBron James is a transcendent player. Oh, you talking about okay? Hey, all right, the greatest <laughs> basketball player of all time. A, but to be a, is he the goat of all time? I mean, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you how you what what else is a goat but of all time? Of all time, is he not right now? He is to me. I think, but, but I'm you know a Jordan. What? Like I was in. Like, I, I, like, I don't blame people went, for thinking that. Though. They went 72 and 10, <laughs> and they lost to who they lose to. They lost. Ah, oh, fuck! I forget. I forget. I was like 12, 10, 10, 12 years old, and I fucking cried because they lost. I was a little kid. I was in love with Jordan, and I'm saying this. I think LeBron James is the greatest player of all time. I don't think that's a conversation that can be measured by championships. So no, of course it's not, not about that because a lot of people are like, same "He won six. So but it's, it's not like, the same that league. Mean anything. It's not the same league, man. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's the, not same the same league. league. I like Jordan was playing. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like I know, I know people of that era are gonna hate this, but the competition in today's NBA is way more than it was back then. Athletically, it is 100. percent Like Jordan, close. he stood out as a dominant athlete because there wasn't a lot like him. But in the same league, like of LeBron, to your point, you have somebody like Giannis. You got like, Joel on, and B that was like on. a freak. Like Steph you these... Curry, KD, <laughs> you know, Russ. <laughs> Russ is the most athletic person I've ever seen in my life. He's that's, the most athletic point guard I've ever that's seen. That's insane. I've like, ever like, seen. You, like, you, there was nowhere near that much amount so, of talent. So he has athletic e- equals. I, I don't... Um, I don't discount he, it. LeBron James is in year 15. He is. And That's he's going to finish probably with so many major records. That's and insane. every major one. Um, he's known as like, he's not even known as a scorer. Right. And he's like top with like top nine or the top uh, nine in, in all time. List. That's fucking crazy. Like imagine if he just wanted to score. He just doesn't want be, to. I think he's the most unique NBA player <clears throat> I've ever seen. I, like ever. And then shout when, out to him. when you think about... When you take into account his whole story, right? Um, Because, like, I I think Venus and Serena Williams, they might be the greatest American sports story we've ever seen, right? For a lot of reasons. But but when you think about LeBron James, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 15, 16 years old. Exactly. Exactly. The chosen one. Yeah, exactly. When you want to talk about somebody who lived up and surpassed every single expectation yeah, that just doesn't happen in sports the same. it just doesn't and, you right know, dramas <clears throat> dramas in abundance but and he has he has he's avoided all of that and, and like, he's <clears throat> avoided the drama but not only that look at how he's using his voice look at how he's leveraging himself as a business called a president a bum <laughs> <laughs> and just socially just what he's done like his level of consciousness yeah i think when it's all said and done um, and the only reason why I didn't say it now, but like, it's just, I think it's better to reflect after, but I think probably when his career is finished, I think the majority of people will see him as the greatest of all time. Man, bro. And he put his posse on. That's what I love about him. So it's like, Oh, totally. <laughs> so like you, you, like y- y- your mans you grew up with, you, you put them in positions of power and that's, this world is built on nepotism, mm-hmm. period. Like mm-hmm. all of these, uh, so who you know, that's, like, like all of these people have jobs because of who you know and how Correct. how you. So like he put his people in positions of power, and that's what we need to do. And I'm like I'm like I don't even I have met him. We've shook hands, we've talked, texted a few times. I don't know dude like that, but like I'm proud of that cat. Yeah, you know, what I mean? like I'm proud of that. Like that, like I, I, I love LeBron James. Like everything that he stands for. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, just I, I, and the thing is, like, because he is interesting that he ch- he's chosen media and production as his yeah primary yeah. business, and so his <clears throat> level of influence is just it's yeah. incredible to yeah. to see what is built. I mean, you talking about a dude that lived in. You think he's more influential than um, Ronaldo? Is it Cristiano Ronaldo? Oh well, depends on how you. It depends on how you judge influence. influence like right. Ronaldo really might be the most famous athlete in the world. That's, yeah, yeah, like straight up, yeah. like that dude, that dude is no is. corner in this planet. Yeah. People do not know who he is. Yeah. But how does he use that influence? And I think LeBron does a better job of using his influence. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? Okay. It's like, um, I think that has to do with him being a black athlete, though. Black athletes, I think, in 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 um, historically. Uh, I mean, like it's it's hard. It's harder. I think mm-hmm. it's harder for black athletes to to do what they do. Not it, it's harder because you, even um, uh, it, there's a sense of responsibility that's placed on you that is not placed on other athletes. Bro, so okay, <clears throat> so I had um, this. 
I, I invested in this company called LearnBest, right? And her name is uh, Alexa Van Tobel. And she, you know, she comes from money, but she went to Harvard. And uh, she she started this company and it, it blew up, right? Uh, so I'm, I, I, she started a book tour and it was actually in New York when I, I came to visit her. And, and she was speaking at this engagement. And I at that engagement, I, I met a lot of her family and friends, right? So as she's walking to the podium to speak or, or about to speak, I meet a lot of them. And uh, they're like, oh, we're just like so super proud of her. I can't like, oh, my God. It was, it was, it was, they were just, they, they, they were just overwhelmed by her success. And it blew me away kind of because I'm not used to that, right? Yeah. Because if... If cats like like if if I if in our neighborhoods if we blow up, there's always the "what can you do for me" attitude, and that shit is a disease, and it it I've seen it time after time after time affect athletes where they feel so obligated to their past more so than their future mm. that they actually blow what they have accomplished mm -hmm. because they're so obligated to their past and these cats that just want to hang around what the fuck well i mean <laughs> what what makes it worse is that um not only do they feel this twisted sense of obligation to their past is that we're the only people and yeah i realize i'm gener generalizing here but just a general sentiment in our community where we make people feel guilty about their success yes Yes. Which is crazy to me. It's wild. Yeah, it's like we're making them feel guilty. Like, okay, and it comes with that kind of manipulation, emotional ma manipulation of making athletes feel like they owe people something. Right. Just because, oh, yeah, I looked out for you in third grade. Or like, yeah. what? Or make them feel like their success is somehow is an indication they're turning their back on their community. It's like, what? Yeah. Like, it's... I mean, but that's, you know, I mean, I hate to use the old phrase, the cra crabs in a barrel mentality. Yeah, you know what I've I mean? never seen it in any other community where you're so obligated to give back. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm saying because there are, there's help needed in our communities. We've, I mean, we've addressed all that. But, like, I've never seen it so prevalent in any other race. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a twisted psychology um, that, that happens with us. I mean, it just... Um, and I, I feel I, I do feel a lot of empathy for, um, you know, black athletes who've been able to attain some level of success because you have your past pulling at you. There's an expectation from your community. You have people there you have to answer to. You, of course, have the people in your current life and current positioning you have to answer to. So it's just a lot to juggle. You yeah, know, a black yeah. athlete just can't just be. Yeah, you know, no, no, like y'all sure, got to stand for something. Y'all yeah. got to raise a community. Y'all got to yeah, do this. You have like a lot, lot going on. Lot, yeah, and it's and it's always been kind of the the pattern in in our in our community. And yeah, I do think we do have a certain responsibility to certainly give back, but give back in the way that's genuine and unique to how you want to give yeah, back, yeah. not out of obligation, but just out of a sense of respect okay. or of trying to create a community, you know, tie. Not because. You got somebody that you grew up with that's like calling you a sellout because you ain't you haven't done X, Y, and Z to their yeah. expectation. That's it. We can have a we can have an hour conversation about. We could. That I think shit. we actually have had an hour <laughs> conversation about a lot of stuff. More than an hour. We definitely have, man. <laughs> but um, no, we could definitely like that. Just that aspect of it, man. And um, it's it it goes it goes it goes layers deep, man. But you have been more than gracious with your time. I I've enjoyed this conversation. I immensely. pushed it back because, uh, you know, sometimes hangovers get the best of you. <laughs> Your uh, first official one. So that's my first me. hangover, man. I've never felt this the, is going down in history books. Let me put this in my calendar. Harry Foster's first had official a hangover I, Sunday, December tenth. I got drunk with my mom, <laughs> and we saw the play, The Book of Mormon. Yeah, beautiful play. By the way, shout out to your mom. I love your mom. Oh, your mom is like my spirit animal. Hey, I know. So y'all, y'all, y'all are Twitter honeys. We are, man. <laughs> like your mother is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of times like people that you may have come across or start to quote know on social media like you never know what those people are like in real life 100%. like am I am I just making up how how awesome they are or are they actually awesome in real life and so it's always a pleasure to me um, uh, you know to meet people 
through social media and then meet him in person and be like, oh my God, she's even better than I thought she, she was. Oh, who you say you are. You do, I love it. I love it. So. That's awesome. Now, she loves you. She's a big fan of you. She's sitting right here. So yes. we're, gonna, we're acting like she's not in the room. I know. Like as we talk about her, like she doesn't exist. Um, and I'm, yeah, and she has invited me to future, uh, you know, foster family functions. So oh, I just we want here. you to know. I mean, but, but you have been touting your spades. Yep. Uh, your, your, we your, can do spades, whisk, tonk. Dominoes, I'm relearning because I hadn't played it in a long time. That's disrespectful to everybody in the black community. But yo, man, I'm I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Detroit. Like we didn't get down. Gotta play dominoes. They do, but like that ain't. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not like our shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we play like spades, whist, like. Spades with Monopoly Tunk Uno was like Tunk. Okay, you talking? Oh yeah, Tunk. You definitely brought Uno into the conversation, fam. Oh please, I just seen like relationships in over a draw four, man. Like it's just like <laughs> seen it go down. It gets real. Like I didn't see just damn near fights in my family over, especially real. Monopoly. It gets real. Oh it, my god. Okay, so real important question before we sign off. Mm-hmm. So when when you have a a a draw two. So if you hit somebody with a draw two, yep. do they skip that turn? I've had fights with people about Man, this th- shit. That is like <laughs> that is like the quintessential question. I've done it. Look, generally speaking, the way the way uh, now you talking about when you have multiple people, not like two people, right? No, you yeah, can just keep going four, on them. four people, five people playing. This okay, thing. well you got four or five people playing. The way we played was. That your <laughs> turn was skipped. Okay, that's what I played too. All right, yeah, that's how we. That's how we got that. For all you Uno connoisseurs, I'm out just there, saying, man. like, set them, like, <laughs> let's not be savages. Your like, we gotta is, stand for something. Your turn is skipped. <laughs> your turn is skipped. Cut you get that games. draw too. Like, keep going. Cut the games, man. If somebody tries to play <laughs> on that, you got to excommunicate them. That's hilarious, man. <laughs> all right, but yo, man, I have, like I said, man, you have been more than gracious with your time. You got to get back. I got to get back. Um, it was a pleasure. It was an honor. You are a uh, you're you're becoming a little you're becoming a little legend in yourself. Oh, stop it's it. real shit. All right, all right. You are becoming like the voice of black women in journalism. <laughs> okay, it's real, <clears throat> and oh. I respect it. And like uh, it's 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 I'm I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan, and I follow y'all, and I watch y'all. Um, <clears throat> keep doing your thing, and if you but but before we turn off, if you ever watch my podcast, we end. Every episode the same way. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is get Jim Carrey on the podcast. Ooh. Jim Carrey is one of my favorite human beings that ever walked the earth. And so I asked all of my guests to try to coerce him into coming on the podcast. So if you could look in this camera right here all right. And, tr- and try to get Jim Carrey on. <sighs> Jim Carrey. All right. Um, also one of my favorite actors. I committed um, Ace Ventura Pet Detective to memory practically. Not back in five minutes. Just wait longer. Um, (laughs) Mandatory. Right? But I say all that to say, like, you're a brilliant actor. You played a variety of roles. Your take on what Andy Kaufman is, you know, I think underrated in many respects. So because you're such a visionary, because of the way your mind works, because you're a thinker, why would you not want to associate with another thinker? Sit down with another thinker. Sit down with somebody else who critically thinks about life and situations. If you are not on this podcast, I guarantee you this will be a career regret. It's a mistake, <laughs> Jim Carrey. Come on the Now What podcast. Are you insane? Do it like yesterday. Man, that was one of the best ones. Hard sell. Man, she, she, she definitely did that. <laughs> Jim, you got to come on, bro. For real. Much love. Signing off. Jamil Hill, you are you are amazing, man. Keep doing what you do. And uh, we, we shall live. All right. Power to the people. Much love. <laughs> <laughs>